Hey there. Subscribe to my channel. And also press this bell icon. I am Roma Malik, teaching class 11th biology. In the preceding chapters, we have seen there is a variety of living organisms. There are unicellular organisms, there are multicellular organisms. We have also seen that how they vary in the structural organization. In the unicellular organism, a single cell performs all the vital activities starting from digestion respiration, reproduction, and other processes. In multicellular organisms, we have seen that they follow a definite pattern, either a cellular level of organization, a tissue level of organization, organ level of organization, or organ system level of organization. There's a division of labor in multicellular organisms, be it from the simple multicellular organisms, the hydra, to the most evolved multicellular organisms, human being. In this episode, we'll be dealing with the unit Structural Organization in Plants and Animals, and I'll be dealing with the chapter Structural Organization in Animals. In the previous episode, we have dealt with the structural organization in plants, and in case of animals, we'll find that a multicellular organism is made up of a group of cells which is called the tissue. In animals, there are mainly four types of tissues. They are the epithelial tissues, the connective tissues, the muscular tissues, and the neural tissues. I think we all know that epithelial tissue, it is generally found in our skin. The cells here are compactly packed with little intercellular matrix. There are two types of epithelial tissues. They may be simple as well as compound. The simple epithelium tissues are again divided basing on their shape. Simple epithelium tissues are composed of single layer of cells and they are found in the lining of our body cavities just as the ducts, tubes and basing on the shape they may be of three types they may be squamous, they may be cuboidal, they may be columnar. Now regarding the characteristics of the squamous epithelial tissues, they are a single thin layer of flattened cells and their boundaries are irregular. That is, they don't have a smooth boundary wall. Example is the wall of the blood vessels, the air sacs of the lungs. The next type of simple epithelium tissue is the cuboidal epithelium tissues. From the name you can make out, these cells are cuboidal in shape. They have a single layer of cube-like cells and they are found in the ducts of glands and the tubular parts of kidney, that is in the nephrons. Their function is secretion and absorption. Columnar epithelial tissue. They are made up of single layer of cells and they are slender cells. The nuclei is found at the base and the free surface has structures called microvilli. From the name only you can make out that these are columnar shaped and their function is secretion and absorption. They are found in the lining of stomach and intestine. The columnar and cuboidal cells they get specialized and act as glandular epithelium they may be unicellular as well as multicellular. Now depending on the mode of pouring their secretions into the glands, they are divided into two categories, the exocrine glands and the endocrine glands. The exocrine glands, they secrete the mucus, saliva, earwax through the ducts. So they are called as the exocrine glands. The endocrine glands, they do not have ducts and their products are called the hormones. These are directly secreted. These tissues have three types of cell junctions. The first is the tight junction. 
which stops substances from leaking across a tissue. The second is called the adhering junction, which performs cementing to keep neighboring cells together. And the third is the gap junction, which facilitate the cells to communicate to each other. So they are distinctly different in their functions and help the tissue as a whole. Compound epithelium tissue is made up of two or more cell layers and they are protective in function. The next type of tissues under the animal tissue category is the connective tissue. Their function is linking and supporting the other tissues and organs of the body. We find three types of connective tissues. These are the loose connective tissues, the dense connective tissues, and the specialized connective tissues. Regarding the loose connective tissues, here the cells and the fibers, they are loosely arranged. For example, the areolar tissue which is found beneath the skin and the adipose tissue which is found beneath the skin which is responsible for storing fat. In the dense connective tissue, the fibers and fibroblast are compactly packed. The dense regular orientation of fibers, they show regular pattern, which is seen in the tendons and the ligaments. The dense irregular orientation of fibers shows irregular pattern, which is found in case of the fibroblast and fibers. The specialized connective tissue includes the cartilage, the bones and the blood. Cartilage tissues they are enclosed in small cavities within the matrix secreted by them. They are found in the tip of the nose, in our external ear. The bones are made up of calcium salts and collagen fibers. They are made up of bone cells which are known as osteocytes and they are present in the spaces called the lacuna. They interact with the skeletal muscles to bring about movements. The bone marrow is the site of production of blood cells. Their function is to give a structural frame to the body and it protects the softer tissues. Blood is the next type of connective tissue. It is a fluid connective tissue consisting of plasma, RBC, WBC and platelets. Main circulating fluid that helps in the transport of various substances. Let us have a quick recap of the portion we studied in this episode. We studied about the differences in the function of the unicellular and multicellular organisms, the types of animal tissues. They are generally of four types, the epithelial, connective, muscular, neural, the characteristics of the epithelial tissues, the two types of epithelial tissues depending on the number of cell layers present, the simple epithelium and the compound epithelium. Under the simple epithelium, we studied about the squamose, the cuboidal and the columnar. We also studied about the secretion glands which are very important, the exocrine gland which has the ducts and the endocrine glands which are known as the ductless glands. The different types of cell junctions, the tight junctions, the adhering junctions and the gap junctions, different types of connective tissues, the loose connective tissues, the dense connective tissue and the specialized connective tissues. In the next episode, we will be discussing regarding the muscle tissues, the neural tissues and the morphology and anatomy of certain organisms like earthworm which comes under annelida, cockroach which comes under arthropoda and frog which comes under amphibia. In this episode, we will be discussing regarding the different types of muscular tissues, the neural tissues and the anatomy of earthworm whose scientific name is ferritima under Annelida. The muscular tissues they are found in the muscles and these tissues they are long cylindrical fibers arranged parallelly. 
here the fibers are made up of fine fibrils which are called myofibrils. They are responsible for the movement in our body and these muscular tissues are of three types. They are the skeletal, the smooth and the cardiac. Now regarding the characteristics of the skeletal tissues, they are bundled together in a parallel fashion that is each of the cells they run parallel to each other and a tough connective tissue encloses the bundle. The smooth muscular tissues they have a tapering end both the ends taper and they do not show any striations as found in the earlier tissues. They have cell junctions which hold them together which is the connective tissue sheath and they are also known as the involuntary tissues. They are found in the blood vessels, stomach as well as in the intestine. The cardiac tissues. These are the contractile tissues which are found in the heart. Here the cell junctions fuse the plasma membranes and make them stick together. They have communication joints which allow the cells to contract as a unit. The next type of tissue is the neural tissue. It is also known as the nervous tissue. These are the unit of neural cells and they are the excitable cells. If we have a look at the structure of the neural tissues, we see that it has a cell body which is known as the cyton, a nucleus which is quite prominent, the dendrites which are the receptors, the axon and the myelin sheath which covers it. They have nodes of Ranvier and the axon terminals. In the previous episodes, we also discussed regarding the different cellular level, the cellular level of organization that how a cell or a group of cells, they aggregate and form the tissues. These tissues in turn form the organ, for example, the organ which is found in our human body, the liver, the stomach and these organs then make up a organ system, be it the digestive system, the reproductive system or the circulatory system. We will be discussing regarding the morphology and anatomy of earthworm, cockroach and frog. We will see that there is a distinct difference between the morphology. We have dealt with morphology in the earlier chapters that is the study of the external structure of the organisms and anatomy the internal structure of the organisms. Regarding the morphology of earthworm, that is how they look from outside. They have a long cylindrical body and the body is divided into more than 100 short segments which are similar, that is they are known as the metamers. The dorsal surface of the body has median mid dorsal line which runs along the longitudinal axis of the body. On the ventral surface they have the genital opening. On their anterior end, they have the mouth and the prostomium, which is sensory in function. The first body segment in earthworm is known as the peristomium. From the 14th to the 16th segment, they have the presence of clitellum. Their body is distinctly divided into three regions. They are the preclitellar the clitellar and the post clitellar. Anatomy of earthworm or the study of the internal structures of earthworm. The body is covered externally by a non-cellular cuticle which is thin layered. Below that is the epidermis and two muscle layers which are circular and longitudinal and they have an innermost silomic epithelium. The epidermis is made up of single layer of columnar epithelial cells which are secretory in function. The elementary canal includes organs like mouth, pharynx, esophagus, gizzard, stomach, pre typhlosolar part of intestine, intestinal cecum, lymph gland, the typhlosolar part of intestine, the intestinal lumen and the typhlosol. Regarding the circulatory system, 
they have a closed circulatory system which consists of the heart, the blood vessels and the capillaries. Blood glands are present in them and they produce the blood cells and hemoglobin which remain dissolved in the plasma. They have four pairs of pulsatile heart. The contraction of the heart keeps the blood circulating in one direction. If we have a look at the blood cells, we also find that these blood cells, they are phagocytic in nature. Respiration in earthworm, they do not have any special respiratory system. They carry on cutaneous respiration, that is with the help of skin. Their nervous system is made up of the ganglia and the nerve ring. Regarding the sense organs, they have the receptor cells for light and touch and they also have chemoreceptors, the excretory organs of earthworm. The excretory organs of earthworm includes the segmentally arranged coiled tubular organ called the nephridia. There are three types of nephridia. These are the septal, the integumentary and the pharyngeal. The septal nephridia, they are present on both the sides of intersegmental septa. The integumentary nephridia, they are attached to the lining of the body wall and the pharyngeal nephridia, they are found in the fourth, fifth and the sixth segments. Reproductive system, earthworm are hermaphrodite animals. The testes and ovaries, they are found in the same body. The other organs of the reproductive system are the vasa differentia, the accessory glands, the prostate and spermatic duct, four pairs of spermatica, ovid funnels, oviduct, female genital pore. Earthworm are of economic importance. Vermicomposting is another important thing. Vermicomposting, this is increasing the fertility of the soil. We know that they are generally known as the friends of farmers because they make the soil porous as a result of which the roots, the developing roots, they found it very easy for their penetration as well as to carry out the process of respiration. Let us have a quick recap of the portion we studied in this episode. We studied about the muscle tissues, the types of muscle tissues, the skeletal, the smooth and cardiac tissues, the neural tissues which are the excitable cells, the parts of the neural tissues and under the organ and organ system, we studied about morphology of earthworm and under the anatomy of earthworm, we studied about the elementary canal, the circulatory system, the respiration, the nervous system, the sense organs, the excretory organs, the reproductive system and how earthworm are useful to us. We will continue with this chapter in the next episode where we will be discussing regarding the morphology and anatomy of cockroach which comes under arthropoda and frog which comes under amphibia. In this episode, we will be discussing regarding the morphology and anatomy of cockroach which comes under the phylum arthropoda and frog which comes under amphibia. Now regarding the morphology of cockroach, the body is dorsoventrally flattened, it is elongated and segmented. The body is divided into three portions, the head, thorax and abdomen. It is covered by a hard chitinous exoskeleton. The head is triangular shaped and has a pair of compound eyes. The exoskeleton has hard plates which are called sclerites. A pair of jointed antenna is found in front of the eyes. The anterior end of the head has the mouth parts like pair of mandibles, pair of maxilla, labium, labrum 
and hypopharynx. The thorax is made up of three segments. They are the prothorax, the mesothorax and the metathorax. The head is attached to the prothorax by a flexible neck. The thoracic segment has a pair of walking legs which has the coxa, trochanter, the femur, the tibia and the tarsus. The four wings are the tegmina and the hind wings they are used for flying. In the abdomen they have 10 segments which bear a pair of jointed filamentous anal styles. Anatomy, the digestive system. The alimentary canal, it has three regions, foregut, the midgut and the hindgut. The foregut is the mouth opening with two pairs of salivary glands. The mouth leads to the pharynx which leads to the esophagus and which leads to the crop. At the junction of midgut and hindgut, filamentous malfigian tubules are found which helps in the removal of nitrogenous waste. The hindgut includes organ like the ileum, the colon and the rectum which opens to the outside by the anus. In cockroach they have an open blood vascular system. They have the hemolymph which fills up the body cavity which is the hemocell. The visceral organs they are located in the body cavity and the hemolymph is made up of colorless plasma and hemocytes. Their heart is an elongated muscular tube which runs along the mid dorsal line of the thorax and abdomen. They have funnel shaped chambers each with a pair of ostea which is found one on each of the lateral side. The respiratory system of cockroach it is the network of tubes called trachea which open to the outside by spiracles. These trachea they divide and re-divide into tracheoles. The air enters the spiracles which enters the body fluid and then to the opening of the tracheoles thereby bringing about the exchange of gases by diffusion. The excretory system their excretory organ are the malpighian tubules which are lined by glandular ciliated epithelium. They collect the nitrogenous waste from the body which is the uric acid and so they are known as urisotelic organisms and then passes it to the hindgut. The fat bodies, the nephrocytes and urisose glands are also meant for the process of excretion. The nervous system includes the ganglia, the brain which is a supraesophageal ganglia which supplies nerves to the antenna and the compound eyes. The sense organ are the pair of antenna, the compound eyes, maxillary and labial palps and anal cerci. The reproductive system of cockroach. In case of male they have a pair of trilobed testes. From each testis a vast difference arises which passes down through the seminal vesicle into the ejaculatory duct. They have an accessory reproductive gland which is mushroom shaped. The sperms form bundles called spermatophores and the external genitalia is the gonapophysis which is the phallomere that surround the male gonopore. Regarding the female reproductive system, the female they have a pair of ovaries which is actually a group of eight ovarioles which contains rows of ova. It has a pair of spermatica present in the sixth abdominal segment which is used for storing the sperms. The collateral glands are found in the female and they produce about 9 to 10 utheka each containing about 14 to 16 eggs. We will move on to the next organism frog which comes under amphibia. In case of frog the body is covered by skin which is smooth and slippery. 
we can easily feel it that it has mucus on the skin and the body is divided into head and trunk. The neck is absent and we will see the presence of tail in the tadpole like stage. Above the mouth they have a pair of nostrils and if we have a close look at the eyes we find that they are large and bulging. The trunk is made up of a pair of forelimbs and hind limbs which are meant for walking, jumping, swimming and leaping. The vocal sacs are present in the males. Regarding the anatomy, the digestive system of frog, they have a large terminal mouth which leads to the buccopharyngeal cavity which has the maxillary teeth in their upper jaw, the vomerine teeth at the roof of the cavity whereas the lower jaw has no teeth. The buccal cavity leads to the pharynx which goes to the esophagus, then the stomach, duodenum, intestine and cecum. The gastric juices released are the hydrochloric acid and the proteolytic enzymes. Frogs generally carry out three types of respiration. When they carry out the respiration through the skin that is called cutaneous respiration. When it is through lungs it is the pulmonary respiration and when it is through the buccal cavity it is called buccopharyngeal respiration. Circulatory system. They have a closed type of circulatory system which includes the blood vascular system and the lymphatic system. The blood vascular system includes the heart, blood vessels. The heart is three chambered. It has two auricles and one ventricle which is covered by pericardium. It has the hepatic and renal portal system and the blood is composed of plasma and three types of blood corpuscles, the red blood corpuscles, the white blood corpuscles and the platelets. The excretory system of frog includes a pair of kidneys, the ureters, urinary bladder and cloaca. In kidney the structural and functional unit are the nephrons. It is ureotelic organisms because they excrete nitrogenous waste in the form of urea. Control and coordination in frog. The nervous system and endocrine system play a very important role in frogs. The brain is enclosed in a brainy box which is called the cranium which is divided into forebrain, midbrain and hindbrain. The medulla oblongata continues into spinal cord which is enclosed in the vertebral column. The sense organs are the sensory papilla the taste buds, the olfactory epithelium, pair of eyes, pair of tympanum and the internal ears. The endocrine system includes the hormones which are secreted by the endocrine glands. These are the pituitary, thyroid, parathyroid, adrenal, thymus, pineal, pancreas and gonads. Reproductive system of frog. The females have a pair of ovaries which are attached near the kidneys. They have a pair of oviducts. The mature female lay about 2500 to 300 eggs at a time. They have external fertilization and the development of the egg to the adult includes a larval stage which is called the tadpole like stage. The tadpole undergoes metamorphosis and develops into an adult. The male reproductive system includes the testes which are adhered to the kidney. They have about 10 to 12 vasa efferentia which arise from each testis which goes to the mesorchium, the kidney, bidder's canal, urinogenital duct, kidney, cloaca. Frogs are of great economic importance because they increase the productivity by eating away the insect and the pest. They maintain the ecological balance by forming important links in the food chain. 
they are also experimental material for the research and their muscular legs are also used as food let us have a quick recap of the portion we studied in this episode under the anatomy we studied about the digestive system the circulatory system the respiratory system excretory system nervous system sense organ reproductive system under frog we studied about the morphology of frog under the anatomy of frog we studied about the digestive system respiratory system circulatory system excretory system the control and coordination that is the nervous system sense organ the endocrine system and the reproductive system we have seen in the structural organization in animals that though the organisms earthworm cockroach frog they come under the animal kingdom they have different body organization which differentiates them from each